let's turn over to the book of James, chapter 4. James chapter 4. I'd like for us to spend a few moments talking about verses 6 through 8. James 4, verses 6 through 8. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God, resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double minded. When you think of the idea of drawing nigh to something or even someone, you're approaching that person, that thing. I was drawing nigh to this podium as I walked up here. We are drawing nigh to 1.45 p.m. We're approaching those things. As we move through time, we're approaching 1.45. As people in general, specifically as Christians, we must draw nigh to God. If we're going to be faithful in this life in the flesh, we must draw nigh to our Creator. We must approach Him. Now, verse 6, it reads that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. But then it says we must submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Submit is one of those terms nowadays that is a no-no word. People are triggered by it. People think you should never submit to anything unless it's their idea of how you should live your life, which is usually unruly. The idea of submit is you're going to make your will someone else's. In this case, our wills must align with that of God's. And that doesn't mean when we like when, what he says, those times where it's easy for us to follow God's commandments, that's not submission. Submission is when we disagree, but we do his will anyway. And we don't see that very much anymore because the individual thinks, I want to do what I, or I will do what I want to do, regardless of what someone else tells me, regardless of whether or not the person who's telling me is right, or even wanting the best for me. But God ultimately wants the best for us, which is our soul's salvation. We know that his commandments are not grievous. It might be difficult for us to execute, but ultimately they're for our good. Now drawing nigh to God, or actually backing up a little bit, resisting the devil causes the devil to flee from us. This is what's being talked about in John chapter 7, or 17, verse 15, where Jesus is praying that that God would keep his disciples, specifically apostles, from the evil one. By extension, that's us today. We do that. We are kept from the wicked one, the evil one, Satan that is, by resisting him. The best way to resist Satan is to give it us, saith the Lord. Whether that is actually saying, get thou behind me, Satan. You know, I, I find myself sometimes slipping up mentally and I think of I have some bad thought, whatever it might be, or even somebody does something to me in my mind, get thou behind me, Satan. Sometimes that's directed specifically at myself. That's something I should not be thinking about. Get thou behind me, Satan. Put that thought away from you, whatever that thought might be. Put that action away from you. Get thou behind me, Satan. Or following Jesus' example in, in Matthew 4, it is written. We resist Satan by giving, it is written, by Scripture. What does the Bible say on the given issue or subject? 
We then see that in Acts chapter 17, verse 27, and this makes it easier to draw nigh to God. Paul there on Mars Hill, he's debating with these people. He's all around these different idols. Because you remember, these people are idol worshipers. But in verse 27 it says that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. God is not far from every one of us. In fact, God wants us to find him. He's not hiding in some corner. He's not hiding himself so nobody can find him. It's not a game of hide and seek where you draw nigh to this God where it's so difficult to find him. God wants to be found. He wants us to find Him. And ultimately that means finding out His will for us and obeying it. Submitting our will to His. The other part of that is our action. We must do the drawing nigh to Him as well. He will draw nigh to us. Contrary to that, in Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 through 4, this should scare every one of us. There's only one thing that will ever be able to keep us out of heaven. And that is our sin. Isaiah 59, the first four verses, says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath muttered, muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity, and speak lies. They conceive mischief, and bring forth iniquity. Again, Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 through 4. Specifically, verses 3 and 4, does that not sound like where we are as a country? Your hands are defiled with blood. How many babies have been murdered over the last 50-some years? How many people speak lies? Oh, but they're just little white lies is what many call them. A lie is still a lie. You think of all the different muttered perverseness out there. How much foul language you have to hear if you want to go outside your house. People no longer are concerned about who hears what they say. Used to, a, a gentleman would not speak foul language in front of a lady. Now the ladies are even doing it. People conceive mischief in all that they do. And ultimately they bring forth iniquity. That's the state of our country. And unfortunately, many in the church carry a similar mentality. They think that they can get away with it. And maybe now in the flesh, they might be able to. But there will come a day when all of our deeds will be brought before us. And we will be sentenced accordingly. Though he pointed out that our sins separate us from God, in that same passage, it shows that God is still able to save us. The only way we're going to be saved, though, is by obeying His will. Growing your faith in His Word and believing in Christ, His Son, as the Son of God, deity in the flesh, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ before others, and ultimately being baptized for the remission of your sins, contacting that blood of Christ, having your sins remitted, they're paid for by the sacrifice of Jesus of Nazareth. That is what saves you, being obedient to His will. Outside of that, you cannot expect salvation. Again, verse 8 of James 4. Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh, draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. We have the next few moments for those who might need to become a Christian. For those who have not obeyed the gospel, 
Why not take this time to become a Christian? For those who have allowed sin back into their lives, take this time to have that sin. Obviously, you've repented of it, but confess it. We'll pray with you and pray for you. No matter the need, everyone must always draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to you. In all that we think, say, and do, we should be always mindful of our Creator. We should be mindful of His will for us. After all, if, if you're always thinking about good things, it's extremely difficult to be thinking about sin from the standpoint of us performing sin, doing sinful things. So if you have either of these needs, please make it known as together we stand and sing the invitation song.